Oh, it can't be anywhere but Dust 2. This has been a home map for G2. They love picking it. They don't like winning it as much, but sometimes they do. So we'll see if today is one of those days. A CT sided start for G2 and a lot of utility for Astralis. Three sets of nades. We've got a pistol dropped over as well. Actually, not even dropped over. Magis is just using the P250. Kevlarless and G2 have had enough of waiting. They wait five, ten seconds. That is all the patience they have in their racket. They're going to completely flank mid and walk up on this long play. Astralis have no idea what's behind them. Yeah, this is a very weird round. And Yugi is going to discover it all too soon. And he actually only spots one man there on the peak. So the fact that there's three, that is info that's going to go amiss to Astralis. And now Hunter and wow. Kenny closing the distance, closing the gap. It is just Device and Dupree left. They're saving. They're running away. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of like this yeah. decision. The bomb's not planted for them. They still get money. They didn't take any damage. And so they get a $350 investment onto the uh, the full armor. So right now, what, what do you do? You're Device and Dupree. You buy head armor. I guess you get drops from AKs from Yugi and, and Zip or Magis or whatever. And then you buy deagle and you give it back to them that's like the safe buy for astralis i'd actually love to see that here right you don't want the the, the guys who saved the armor to have to buy the the ak's because then they can't afford the helmet and there you go 350 dollars upgrade on the pair of them it's actually a really good call because what's look at the other side of the coin right what's the best case scenario astralis could have got from fighting for that bomb they probably wouldn't have won it in a two on five uh and they would have got what like one two three kills like that's not that's not worth it overall if you look at the money so yeah, Astralis, they, they, they play the percentages, a term we often use when talking about the best team in the world. And, well, many others that have tried and failed to copy what Astralis have provided for us. Quick technical timeout before we get back into the action. But just, just marvel at the buy that Astralis have brought us in this second round. Double AK, Scout and Magisk, Yugi, you know, got to take a hit with a Deagle, but Zip's on a, a MAC-10 as well. It's actually a really, really good situation. So Astralis, they are going to be happy moving forward. G2, of course, taking the pistol round, you know, goes without saying. They are investing as well. But, you know, when you look at these buys, which one's better? Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's like that clip from The Office, you know? We want you to tell the difference between these two buys. They're the same, they're the same. You go. they are. Yeah. And you know, maybe they're not exactly the same, but in terms of the firepower that they're gonna be outputting, this is a pretty evenly matched second round on the back of that save. So this time, oh sorry, technical pause drawing to a quick close there. And now we're gonna get to see the fruits of this save, of this economic decision from Astralis. Double AKs out, Zipnix with his Mac 10 Ooh. running and gunning out towards long. He's dropped Kenny S already, so a man advantage taken, a weapon to be retrieved. And suddenly, Astralis, they're looking like the favorites here in this second round. Yeah, forget it. I mean, already on the board, forget the AKs. It's the Max 10 entering, uh, entering rather. And the scout down mid does get a spot off, a tag onto Amanek, the one org in play, the one rifle left for G2 after that Famas was removed from long. Picked up by Zip. It will be moving up towards A, device leading the charge. A lot of damage onto Jax and the CT smoke, or at least a couple of them should come down here for Astralis to allow that cross towards the A bomb site. Smoke out from G2, but device can watch this and make sure no one pushes through. He's got to go through the Molotov and from the fire into his own death. Next is on the site. G2 are stacked up here with three out of four of their players. Good damage done by Astralis, but it gets returned. Zip runs out of ammo after that kill. Nexa drops Yugi in the smoke, and now it's up to Zip and Magisk, who has no armor. This is a mess. Look at the health of G2. We have two players with four and three points of health. The bombs dropped for G2, and Astralis need to get control back. This is such a weird round again. Magis here with this scout could stand to do a lot. And it next one bullet, all that's required, but it's the same onto him, down to the 1v1. Nexa with 4 HP, and Magis oh, dear. his shot. Oh dear, this is an awkward one. Wow. Magis is gonna connect it, and he'll take the round for Astralis. They steal it away with the four spy. I hey, couldn't find any of those AKs. There was one on the ramp further up on the body of device, but he'll get a famous out of that one at least. Next to man, he stalls for so long. He does all this damage through the smoke. He gets two kills. He hides on sight, and the magician scouts him out of the round. He was so low. Couldn't take that bullet. 
Great work from uh, Astralis to actually find that force out long, and that's pushed G2 in a buy of their own in round number three. Deleted is Amanek through the door by device. That's so quick. And Astralis armed and sat outside a B. Tempted, I'm sure. There's only one man inside that site. It's Hunter. Rotate from mid in the form of Kenny. Gets a scout back. Will get spotted while doing so and retreats to the CT spawn where he can likely just get smoked off if Astralis want to go for a mid to B play here. That's what things are looking like. Scout drops. The smoke arrives and Kenny is pushed back. It's up to Hunter who can't get it done and now the B site is just open. And that sucks for Kenny. Oh, he does see a foot, but he wasn't able to get the shot off. And even then, to make matters worse, Dupree is looking to deny him this scout save. Actually, it's a flawless round for Astralis in the very, very end. They deal with all the players on G2. And uh, now there's no money left over for the G2 squad. Astralis really turning this one around from the... Uh, Rather slow beginning that we had. Pissed around, obviously, going in favor of G2. Into this round, though. Only pistols over here on the G2 side. And a slow start here. As they looked over towards Long early, they now group up at the catwalk. Mid to B, looking to come in from Astralis. And they might just bypass each and every one of these pistols that lie on the catwalk. Uh, it kind of hinges on Magis getting this information that the B site is clear. She should be about to grab and actually kind of spring the trap themselves. Device goes peeking up through the, uh, the cat position and gets dealt with, but the bomb rotates away almost immediately. And so now... B2, they grab the scout. That's pretty much all they've got. Astralis are going to grab this third round. You weren't expecting these pistols to find much. And they are going to go grouping up over in T-spawn, leaving Amanek with the scout to hold down this, uh, this kind of mid to B rotate out of the site. Meanwhile, the pistol's going to wait back here in T-spawn and look to find anything. And really, like, you know, if you can get an AK out of this, you're happy if you're G2. It's not something you're going to, like, write home and tell your friends about, but I'll take it with you into the next round. Yugi and Dupree in the tunnels. Not going to offer anything up. And so this should be pretty clean. I don't see Astralis looking to get too aggressive outside of the tunnels, especially not with all the noise being made by G2 on this side of the map. So they don't. Astralis, 3-1. But now the buy comes in. Now things get exciting for G2. We hey, had to just... Hey, Hugo, nice hey, to have you back on the broadcast yeah, again. Yeah, pretty good. You know, I'm um, excited to be here. You know, they... PC just turned off, as it does. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It, it's a hot day. PCs get hot. But tell you what else is about to heat up, Hugo. Ooh. This series right now, wow. E2 coming in with the buy. And this is where it gets exciting. Kenny is the AWP. There's an AWP in the hands of Device as well. And I cannot wait to see the head-to-head -head between these two. Careful with the desk hitting, Harry. I know you're excited, but I think that's what caused it to switch off. So you're going to be very uh, movement uh, lacking, I guess. And that's something that, well, Amanek has figured out to perfection. He's hiding in the smoke. He's standing still. He's standing tall, but not for long. Magis will spam it. It felt too good to be true. And if it is, well, it usually is. 3-1, and Astralis looks to lock in a fourth here with a B-bomb plant. Device has been caught lower, which is a bit of a problem. That's an orb gifted. Nexa could just straight up save that, and that will be the game plan for G2. Already losing B with a man down. They don't want to consider retaking. It probably wouldn't go their way, and they have no kit either way, so... G2 giving four to Astralis, but they do save a double AWP, so it's actually a pretty good round for G2, all things considered. But yeah, I mean, moving forward, definitely don't want to be spending your entire CT side saving. However, Astralis, that's their exact intention. They'd love you to do that. The first and not the last mid to B you're going to see in this T side. Astralis move out of the tunnels and will save all their guns. G2, same story on eight. 
And now for G2, they got to make the decision, right? Do you want to drop guns over? Which you can do. Jackson and Exa can give M4s to Hunter and Amanek. But what that will mean is you're going to split your money, right? Everyone has 3k right now. That would put you, you know, it's better for everyone to buy back down to zero. Or you're going to have, you know, a real difference between your players. And that's not something you don't really want if you want full rifle rounds. So G2 just eco on the two players who died last. And hope these triple saved rifles can have a good impact in this round. Kenny looking for a great off angle. Catches Magis down lower. And G2 a man advantage. Amanek's going to go for the gun. He will get punished. Ooh, looking like there might be some re-aggression from Hunter here, along with Jax at long. Kenny can line up a flashbang for them at car as well. And this runs a bit of a risk if your name is Zipex. He does lie and wait on the other side. Kenny's looking to be that first point of contact by the looks of things. And Jax is actually playing anti-flash on the corner. This is a nice little setup though, and Astralis not aware that this is something that G2 have up their sleeve. This is nice, you know, we've seen G2 like assemble their chess pieces here at long, and now we have the uh, the attackers looking to try and take advantage of it. Flash goes round, Jax pivot, doesn't get flashed because he was planning oh, for no. this all round long. He admittedly wasn't oh, able to dear. deal with Device, and yeah, it's not looked as clean as he wanted it to. My goodness, Device <laughs> and Zipex, they've dealt with it. And this leaves Hunter and Nexa in a two on three. Nexa, the one man with anything to offer in this round, currently towards CT spawn. 20 seconds on this clock, Astralis, they've got two smokes at least. They could drop one of those into CT and that's gonna deal with Nexa well. But this bomb has gotta go down long and it's gotta pick up the pace. Luckily enough, they deal with Hunter, they deal with it in time. Uh, ooh, it started to get a little bit yeah, worrying. They had it, they had it anyway. I think the key there to note is the reason Astralis are playing slow there is because the bomb is long on Device, and, and they know that. G2 know the bomb is long, and they know Device is the last man there. The so Astralis, they don't want to be like, Device, just go cross, man, you'll be fine. And then he dies with 10 seconds and loses the bomb. So they need to figure out where that last A player is. So Astralis, they wait the smoke out, they go out together, they kill Hunter, and then Device can cross. The only reason I say it starts to get worrying is because Device threw the bomb into the site as though there was someone there and started to run long oh. and there was no one there to retrieve oh. the bomb in the site so then he had to go right? back yeah. across and oh i mean there was a world in which that got out of hand okay. there was six okay. seconds that's not like ample time to be yeah. making those little mistakes but all, cal all calculated by yeah, the yeah it's all fine that right that's just how astralis work like even when they do something that gets you a little bit worried they still win the round and here they go up through cat magisk opening up and hunter will up nice. the back but it's quickly dealt wow. with quickly traded and Astralis are really exerting this pressure at the A side of the map. I don't know how Zipnix wins that fight. That didn't look like a fight he should have won ever, but he has. And this leaves Nexa and Amanek in a two on four. They're saving. They're already bowing out. They're saying, yeah, we, we can't do this one. That's so frustrating. Zip just runs through the long smoke. No flash, no indication, no warning, just Zipnix. And he just blows G2 out of the water there. I mean, great trade work up on Cat Astralis. They throw Majisk at the problem. Majisk gets a kill. He dies. Another player, Dupree, peeks out, trades. That's the A-side like gone. It's done, isn't it? And then the long player, because he's so focused on the catwalk play that just came from nowhere, he gets caught out by a long rush. So, yeah, I mean, I said G2 don't want to, or, you know, don't want to spend their entire game saving. They may not have a choice, because Astralis has done a great job at just forcing G2's hand every time and guaranteeing the round off the first couple of kills. Saves attempted here. Nexa, good luck. He's out of ammo, and they're just going to keep shooting. They have more bullets than him. Two players... Twice as many bullets. The math is there. And Zipex, he's going to kill him. Leaving only Amanek to save. Astralis goes 6-1 up and brutalize the economy of G2. Would not be a good idea to buy right here. If Ooh, they're going to pause. Maybe they're going to do it. G2. I mean, if they want orbs, this is not the buy that's going to get you orbs. That's for sure. So likely a, a low investment, a half buy around this org from Amanek. And G2 can fully buy up in the next round with everything they need. Oh, wait. Wait, no, that's... Yeah, okay, that's a meme. Yeah. I, I I can't tell whether 
the reality ends and the joke starts. Is, yeah. is, is Jax joking or did Jax even say that? I don't know. Was there actually a fire alarm? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? I like these, uh, like for that reason, you know, it's like a little mystery. So uh, Twitch is chat, this one is for you. You have to figure it out. Was there really a fire in Nexus building? And we'll keep giving you new cases to go on throughout the day, but that's your first mission, agents. I will say it, yeah. I'm, no, I'll, 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 let's move away from it. Half fire and G2. <laughs> let's you know, quit before we get fired, Harry, maybe. Device moving up cat. The warp is out for Astralis G2, relying on just one gun. That gun is on A. It's going to be Amanek, man of the hour. Or at least hoping to be now in CT and Astralis grouping up to take Catwalk nice and methodically with utility. Zipex holding for the long play. Double setup here from G2 this time. They don't want to get cheese through a smoke anymore. But as a result, because they've double set up on long and they still want some control towards B, it's left A fairly open. Amanex having to pivot between both mid and that catwalk position. That can often lead you, you know, if Astralis fake you out and throw a mid to B smoke and then go cat. I can leave you stuck in CT, having to take those horrible headshot angle fights to the site. Instead, it is mid, and Amanex here. The smoke blooms late, and so he gets a free kill. This bomb has been lost. Device needs cover. Next is trying to push, and Amanex goes through the smoke. Trades are good from Dupree, though. He keeps Astralis in this round, but Kenny has come from the back line with Jax alongside him. They don't know Device is here, although well, Kenny's going to try and chase him down. Oh, no, Yugi's dead. How is he dead? Device trades, but he's so low, he needs to escape, and he still hasn't got control of the bomb. Let's see, Device, what can he do? 8 HP and not checking to the left. This could be his downfall as there is a man waiting back at the B bomb site. Now, the smoke has kept Jax at top mid. Not going to go through that. Device closing the distance into B, but surely he's not ready for this position. Oh. And he's not. Hunter going to blindside him. And somehow, some way, G2 with the pistols, they find themselves a second round. It all kind of falls apart when. Uh, I mean, that was a list of... Have his say in, in the matter. That was like a list of problems for Astralis, right? The mid to be smoked, they pushed past it. Like, that's fine if you get the kill, but, you know, the one gun that G2 had was there. Amine gets a frag. Yugi in the two on two, or two on three, rather, is covering Device, who's stuck under Xbox, and he needs that kill on Kenny. If Yugi kills Kenny there, Astralis are fine. But, uh, okay. Now now we've got a, a bit more of the story, Harry. Got a bit more of the picture. Well the real done, question Twitch is chat. you've done it yeah we, we figured out the mystery the real question is what's next actually cooking frogs look man or was that just a strike i don't think if you i don't know hugo <laughs> you know i like the dedication to trying to to solve this one no one of the greatest there you go look, no. no you just got hard no <laughs> that whole graphic has space right. i mean good job that's az-esque isn't it I'm yeah, running I'm 99 percent sure like, it is. Can I just, I, I'd love confirmation. Let's bring up a yes. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, great work, Elliot. If that is you, you kept us smiling. Astralis. Well, they kept G2 frowning. At least one round gets picked up off the back of that eco. Kenny's back on the AWP as well on the A site, but Astralis don't want anything to do with Kenny. They want B. Next, are an Amanek here with. Oh, they're pushed as well. If Yugi gets a shot, if, if Device takes him down, anyone here for Astralis, Yugi pulls out a nade. Worst timing possible. There is a trade from Dupree. He's so good at getting Astralis back into these rounds right when it looks like it's a done deal. But Astralis aren't committing. They think there's more players here. Little do they know. If they just pushed off the back of those kills, they would have had B for the taking. G2 were nowhere near. Luckily enough, Device might catch a player up on A, but Jax is not falling for it with B not being lost. Zipex tagged on the cross. And you've got to wonder if Astralis just committed, this round would have likely already been done. Dupree can still make it so. He's flank middle. He's taken down that B rotation. He's split G2 up one per site. Oh, this is sweaty. Yeah, it's gross, and in a way, I kind of love it. Dupree on three, and now looking for a kill at B. There's a man called Hunter, who's trying to have a bit of a say in the matter, and he will have more than that. He takes the head off of Dupree, and Jax comes in to follow up. So G2, they're able to keep that one under wraps. They get that third on the board. Yeah, like I understand why Dupree wouldn't want to go to that smoke, right? Like there has been some time, but considering how quickly those fights went down and, and knowing that there, that was a double B play and therefore you don't have a mid player if you're G2 because you, you've leaned towards B early. And so essentially one of those B players is your mid player. 
Uh, Astralis could have taken that round off of the BP kills, but instead they will give it to G2. And uh, now this game gets a little bit more competitive. This fast pick from Device out long, but it is traded. Kenny in middle, dropping the Jiska Cat. Dupriest through a smoke, and that is a <laughs> risky. No reward in this sense. Device has gotten the kill through the door. But he's lost tip in the process. This is so brawly right now. Like, this is the exact kind of game that G2 won with the way that Astralis are giving them some of these fights. And so, back towards B, Astralis do go. Kenny is here with the orc. Back through the smoke. Yugi's just committing on his own. The vice cut off by the utility. Kenny going above the box. The Molotov coming. He thinks over the tunnels. Does he know that Yugi's already out? The Molly's pushed him open. Yugi's missed a shot. And Kenny does get traded. Device with a chance to clutch. Yeah, he needs the ace if he wants to pick this round up. And a 1v2 still to find. Jax and Nexa on the other side. Device spraying. Now trying to plant this bomb and they don't let him. They don't yeah. let him get the plant. They rush him down, but they haven't found the kill. And Device, oh, no. oh, there's one. Oh. And the follow up, Device, what an ace. What a round and what a play. You thought the G2 had done enough. They rush him off the Device is not budging. Oh my goodness, what a round from this man. What did G2 do? They just pushed the door, but they didn't get the kill. They let him, they let him isolate fights. They let him one-on-one -on -one them. They could have just pushed. He was planting Harry. He was mid animation. G2 could have just run at him and won the round, but they set up, they let him fight them. And you don't want to let Device fight you because look at what's happened. Oh, Hunter's jump was just nose and Hunter's forced to kill. Big play. Hunter knew that position was no longer valuable with his jump getting hurt. And he does get away with at least one. Is it going to be enough though? G2, they love winning Ecos. They're obsessed with it. But this one should be out of their hand, even with Astralis walking into what is essentially a full stack. Yugi can come in lower on the Lurk. Right now, he's holding for a cap retake from that mid position. Dupree looking for the Apex. They are presenting themselves. Ooh, dear, lots of damage through the smoke. There's only one smoke down, big gap, and they're going to flash through it as well. Amanek, no fear. Another eco win, perhaps. Device has got to stop it all again. It's deja vu. This is the exact same situation as the eco that G2 last won. Device that it dinks, dead eventually. Yugi trades, but now he's in a clutch. Uh, Yugi, if there ever was a time to show you got the goods, my friend, it is now. 1v2. There's an orb been retrieved, and that finds its way into the hands of Amanek. That's probably going to be Yugi's tallest oh, no, task. Yeah. He's going for the bomb Ooh. pickup, and you smooth criminal, Yugi. Ooh. You smooth man. He's grabbed it. He's stolen Ow. it away from them, and now he's running the gauntlet all the way to B. They finally realize that he's grabbed the bomb, and Amanek holding for the Ooh. cross, but it's not a killing blow. And Yugi lives to tell the tale of the B-site cross. Now with a bomb planted, it's deja vu. It's this round all over again, but this time... It's Yugi in the hot seat, 11 points of health. Jackson Amanek on for the retake and an eco round for G2. They can't afford to let another clutch slip through the net. Yugi waiting patiently. He's held onto tunnels all round. Both players for G2 coming through the doors. And Yugi lets the first man cross, Ooh. not able to flick in time. It's Amanek nice. with four kills and a defuse for G2. Yeah, Amanek, four kills. What a massive round. He has no armor, he has nothing. Just a 5-7, flash through the long smoke. How did G2 constantly replicate these, these eco wins? Two of the four of the rounds in this game are eco wins for G2. And like that one was just ridiculous. Like, even with the advantage, even with the pick, there's no way they should be winning that. Great work from G2, though. Flashed out, getting in the face of Astralis. Yugi tries his best, but... I mean, that, that tag from Amanek does actually have resounding consequences. That might have been a transfer for Yugi if he wasn't 10 health. Kenny can't see the orb in middle. It's actually a scout. Dupree's taking the orb long for a pick, but won't get the shot. Trades it back to Device. Device wants a bit of the action as well. Piece of the pie, perhaps he goes middle. Bomb heading towards B. G2, one man there. This could once again be a quick paced round for Astralis. It could end in disaster for G2. Nice leg onto Zip. That's the bomb spotted in spawn. They're actually not going to commit to be off the back of it, but that bomb does go spawn side towards the site. Luckily, Kenny's actually supporting from the window this time, giving a little bit more room in mid for device to work. Kenny, his time to shine now. That's the pre found. They're pressuring him, but Kenny's not moving. And with this follow up onto Magis, he's now relying that Amanek uh, is going to be able to hold down the tunnels. 
Don't be confused. That was Hunter dropping device down in mid, not Amanek here through the smoke. Don't worry, guys. It's actually going to get mopped up by Kenny. A G2, fifth round to their name. They keep it nice and clean. That's brilliant looking to the future for this squad because it's an eco right now on the Astralis side. Certainly a, a round that we didn't expect to see given how this game started. A 6-1 lead for Astralis, but G2 has certainly closed the gap a little bit thanks to these eco victories. Bit of a streak here now of a third round perhaps if Astralis can't win the Glocks. And well, I would be betting on Astralis not winning with Glocks. Jack supported by Kenny's all pod long, two in B, G2 not wanting to get rushed and be put into retakes. Strauss don't have any util to get onto a site here. That's going to make things very difficult. And likely just a bloodbath in the favor of G2 at this level, you know, with Glocks. It's a very different case to being, you know, on the CT side with some P250s and some flashbangs than it is to be on the T side when you've got to get through these long range battles or these tight choke points. Either of them are unfavorable. And in towards the A site, Astralis head missed shots, though, gives Astralis an opportunity to at least get a bomb plant in this round. That would be excellent if they can do it. The Molly's there. The plant is in, though. There's the money made. They're going to burn to a crisp, but it doesn't really matter for Astralis. That is a profitable round. Device kills Nexa. And even though Zip is going to probably just save his Glock, that's going to be a sick round for G2 and a big bonus when it comes to the cash for Astralis. Locked and loaded is that round. And now Astralis can fully buy moving forward. Yeah, still, this comfortable lead that Astralis had is now feeling like a bit of a distant memory. You know, you think about the fact that this was, uh, what, 6-1 for Astralis at one point in time. This is a nice recovery here from G2. In this round, it's Zipnix and Device finding the openers, but Nexa trying to take Ooh. matters into his own hands, and with a stellar spray helped out by Jack, they've held on to long. It's Device once again. In a clutch situation here, it was a 1v2. He's got it down to a 1v1. Jack's on the other side, a device donning the M4, not wasting time with the AWP. Gets a little overzealous there. Jack swings out wide, takes the fight early, isn't playing the bomb, and device wasn't ready. 7-7, seven to seven, G2 tying this one up. As we said, this was 6-1 in favor of Astralis at one point in time. So this 7-7 seven, seven scoreline, is a well-recovered half from G2. I don't get me wrong, G2 have had bad games against Astralis. They've been stopped, but as said on the on the you know the, the analyst, I, I keep saying desk. It's not a desk, but I guess I'm going to use the word desk. Um, it, is the fact that you know G2, if their players are performing, if they're at the level that we know they can be at, they can certainly compete against Astralis. So. Right now we're seeing that in the server, 7-7. And do remember as well, all these previous matches, all this, uh, these historic games between Astralis and G2, here in the Rotorio and EPL and Katowice, that was all without Yugi, that was with Glaive. So Astralis are playing you know, a harder game right now, considering they don't have their in-game leader in play. Right now, G2 are in full control of this last round of the half, a man up, device tagged, and a man stuck at Gandalf. Could work in Dupree's favor though, he's kind of timing. Check though, Hunter. Oh, it's a messy one. Looked like it was on for Dupree, but not connecting. Hunter now going wide with a couple more before he his demise. Well, at the end of the first half, G2, they're able to find themselves in the lead with a commanding little comeback under their belts. 6 1 down, now an 8 7 half, and G2 laughing at the fact that Astralis ever thought they were going to walk away with this map without a fight. Now moving into their T side, they're going to set up down here in the lower tunnels. They've got players making noise and keeping the hurt down on mid to deny any early info the way of the Danes. And G2 now about to rear their head out through these lower tunnels. Looking like this could be a mid to B play, right? You've got a smoke, you've got some flashes. Alternatively, you could head up over here towards the catwalk, drop that short cat smoke and try and make this cat play happen. 
If they do go towards Cat, it would have to be an all-in play. And the fact that they've still got Nexa and Kenny both floating around down in the lower tunnels, to me, doesn't scream that this is a commitment. And no, it's not. Jack Ooh. tries to hop down into CT. And he does get down, but it's only his corpse, Dupree. On with four. This is the ace on the cards for Dupree and the pistol. My goodness, he has laid waste to G2. Nexa is the only man remaining. And Yugi, of course, going to snatch the ace away. Doesn't want anyone to forget about him in the server. But Dupree, this was stellar. He deals with Jackson CT. And then these, it's this little sequence of just dealing with Hunter and Amonek. Stellar stuff from him. And a great game from both Dupree and Device here for Astralis. That's the pistol round locked in. And now we have a tie game once again, Hugo. Oh, look at Device as well. He's playing USP in this round. He's not even armed as he knows G2 are going to be full eco in this one, which is, I'd say, you know, a gr he's right. Great read for Device, but a bit of a gamble, you know. Dust 2, you don't see a lot of T-side force buys. You, you know, more commonly than not, you're going to just go Glocks and get AK with bare minimum util in that third because far more effective than Deagles or Tech 9s in this one. Dex up on Catwalk, combined with a scout, are just going to tear apart these T's in the middle area. Nexa getting tagged at top, and Jack's trying to do what he can down lower. G2 trying to at least bait Astralis into giving them a kill at bare minimum, but that's just not happening. Astralis are clinical with their fights, and they will say goodnight. Nine rounds and no deaths in it. Nice. Looking for a Glock or looking for a pistol upgrade. Grabs nothing but a Glock and we'll throw it away. Nine rounds and the buy is here for Astralis. Here's what that eco from device allows him to do. Buy up that AWP nice and early in this game. G2 fully bought in round number three. AKs and all the utility behind it. Where are they going to go? Well, quite the opener found by Kenny. Not the start that Astralis wanted into this Ooh, round, what? and a missed shot from Device. Nade's going to follow up with a nice chunky bit of damage, and oh my goodness, there's even more nades going in. Yeah, Hunter, I don't blame him. He doesn't know what's hit him. That's a triple nade stack from Catwalk. Now, oh my goodness, Jax is almost gone as well. That Astralis, they've got a new weapon, man. They've brought artillery into the game. This is wild. There was a lower tunnels threat, but it's pretty much dealt with on the back of the nades. Jax is 11 points of health, Hunter is out of the round, and now it falls to the other three here for G2 to try and pick up the slack. And they're going right into this stack as well. Device is here on the A site with two more. And no one's looking at Catwalk, funnily enough. They gotta change that one as Jax goes flying through the smoke only temporarily. He's made quick work of Device scoped and a Molotov coming as a player on locks. Apex has got him as well. This MP9 is doing everything and more for Astralis. Finally overwhelmed, but Device has not been cleaned out of the site. And even though he's low, they don't have a grenade to get rid of him. Dupree, if he dies on the flank, G2 can still win this round. If Dupree holds and stays here, he can stop it all happening, but he's missed the timing. He's gone up through, uh, through long. He's gone for this flank. G2 throwing a mid to B smoke. Maybe G, uh, Dupree will get called back. Maybe they'll realize, but Dup uh, they're still going to commit towards A. They're just going to go up catwalk and into device. Dupree might not even play into the round. Yui's in spawn. And here they come. Device missed shot. No second opportunity. Nexa gets the kill. And now the bomb plant's been allowed. G2 have some way been given away into this round. Nexa. Oh. Job scouted by Yugi. Amanek wow. falls as well. And Astralis, they regain control of that round. It looked like G2 might have done enough. Nexa was delivering kills left and right, but Yugi just blindsides him, jumping around like Those it's nothing, well. like it's casual. Here's a replay of the nades. Like, this was brutal. Zipnix as well with, like, I, there's just so many kills where I'm sat here and I'm like, okay, don't really know how they've done it, but they have. It is Astralis pretty, for you. yeah, it's pretty great though, man. Like one of the things I do like about Glaive going away is the device even said it, you know, they're just going to be focusing on like the individuals in the beginning and like getting matches comfortable. And I kind of like, you know, a bit of a looser Astralis in a sense of the word, you know, a, a time for the individual talent to shine through because this team's always kind of known for how good and sound they are tactically. Well, this can serve oh, no. as a reminder that they've got the goods in the server ah. as well. A device running on out of mid, helped out by Dupree. The rotation is 
perfectly timed on his behalf. He's still holding down middle and does get overwhelmed there by the MAC-10. So this leaves Yugi in a bit of an awkward spot. He's going to try and hold down this b site solo, and he has dropped the bomb. He's actually removed two. Hunter with a flank down from the catwalk, though. He's made this round possible. He's put them in a doable situation. Yeah, you can see Zip just runs away from that fight immediately, though. He wants to play with Yugi. They have Util, and the bomb on B It's dropped, so... Astralis don't need to risk anything in this round. They can just wait for G2 to come to them. Zipex checking lower is given a timing where G2 can isolate Yugi in the site, but they don't know where he's playing from. They've cleared out a lot of these positions. Yugi doesn't know they're inside A or B either, but he's going to flick back round. Does a dink, nothing more. The AWP posted will fall off. Zip can kill it with a nade. That's a massive grenade, and Kenny does survive. Another Molotov available as well. Kenny holding down the site and Hunter running for his life. Zip has a one-on-one, -on -one and he's not going to take it. Kenny fast on the AWP, and I think Zip was still considering the fact that there could be that second player there. They were not. Nice B hold from Yugi, but yeah, the setup for Astralis, they're, they're, they're getting a lot of very unfortunate timings in this game. Uh, thinking of, you know, Dupree going long when uh, he's he's flanking mid and G2 just come back on cat right there, checking tunnels when G2 are coming in through, uh, you know, middle. Astralis have been getting caught out a little bit here, unlike them, but 10 9 up. What's the play here? Oh, well, Dupree, he's sick and tired of waiting around. And with that molly behind him, uh, he doesn't have much of a choice. But one of the things you got to say about Astralis is, man, it's like they're all on like the same wavelength. It is like a hive mind, the way that they play this game. Everyone's helping each other out. And Dupree has his life saved oh, there. Oh, a great man. flash. And Nexa is so blind. Amanek and Kenny left in a two on five. Amanek caught a timing out through mid and they don't know he's here. <sighs> Kenny is the bomb and almost Ooh. goes down. Amanek could win this whole round. And yeah, they're not ready for him. He gets the kill at B, wow. he turns around, follows up onto Dupree, and he's carved a path back into this round for G2. It's all now hinging on whether or not Kenny can survive the journey. And it's looking good for him. He's ran all the way through T spawn. Zipnix is going to try and cut him off, but Amanek's already moved into the tunnels. He's already here to help out. And it's another kill for oh, Amanek yeah. in this round. He's put them into a two on two with just the MAC 10. Magisk and Device. Oh, well now just Device. Amanek is on for the ace in a round where it was him and Kenny up against the flawless Astralis. He's made it doable. He's made it more than doable. He's almost locked in the round for G2. Amanek, the savior, the Mac Daddy. And come on, get the ace. There it is. He'll get it. Five kills to his name. $3,000 made. And it's all on the back of catching that timing through mid and just maintaining the trigger discipline. He had kills on A that he could have gone for, but it was at quite the range. And he just beelines into the B bomb site and wins the whole whole round on his own. You'll notice four of those kills are headshots. I think only one of them was a dink, and that's because Astralis had low economy and bought up. They fully invested, but they didn't buy head armor. That's a common you know, way to save some money when you know you're up against AKs, but that's why Amanek pulled that in, right? Astralis think they're up against AKs, psych. Back 10 in play, and there's two of them here and now, and an eco round for Astralis when G2 definitely know what they're up against. No way Astralis can fully buy into this round, and now they need to give not only G2 the lead, but a little bit of wiggle room as well. Astralis won't have the money in the next round to fully buy up. Gotta wait. G2, they're certainly doing that. They're stalling out this round time. Astralis are hoping for a kill to come their way with the pistols, but one by one, they're getting made work of. Kenny dropping device. Zip is near the end of his life as well. He doesn't know it, but Hunter's up catwalk with the Mac 10, and that's A cleaned up, taken. And no one here for Astralis to stop that. Jax is cutting off rotations, or at least trying to, and he will get denied. Kenny, careful, you've got the AWP, buddy. You don't want to lose that, as it's going to be the Mac 10s that find almost every kill in this round. G2 up to 11. Astralis still with one more eco before the things start to get back on track. So, yeah, may as well keep running the Mac 10. Why not? Yeah, another Rico from Astralis. Gives perfect timing for these, uh, these SMGs to find a lot of effect. I want to see what Nexus is going to bring to the table with his. Bar's certainly been set high by Amanek.
It's a quad catwalk set up here for Astralis with all these pistols. What are they going to be able to find from this? Because Astralis taking this gamble. They're hoping that people come cat. With how G2 is set up, it certainly feels like they are going to try and take this catwalk. Kenny gets deeped on the cross at long. And now they might be looking for this trade. And this might bait them in even further. Alternatively, they just meant to be. And I think they figured this yeah. out. I think they realized, okay, it's a cat stack. Let's go. Let's take this site. Dupree, USP. These aren't great odds for him to defend this site. And he falls almost immediately. For Astralis now, it might just be a save on this sort with Magisk. You can maybe justify sending these pistols in just to try and find something. But it looks like they're just going to play bodyguard to the orb. Get down, Mr. President. Or at least give me your orb first. That's the only thing other than the Kevlar and Yugi Astralis are really going to take out of this round. But at this point, take what you can get. G2, they're in the lead. They are 12-10 up right now in control of this map. Not only a long old comeback in that first half where Astralis had a 6-1 lead and ended it with 7 on the T side. But now in this half two, pistol locked in for Astralis, the conversions. And ever since that point, G2 have been clean with the rifle rounds. And I mean, we've had a lot of ecos for Astralis, right? Economy has not been their uh, you know, mainstay. And so quick pause before they get back into the game, uh, gun rounds, because this game is certainly getting uh, a, little, a little close, a little worrying for Astralis potentially. Ah, one to 10 in the last nine months against Astralis, but their only win was on Dust2. Well, G2 are looking to add another one to the list. Certainly easier said than done, but they are in pole position. Two rounds ahead. The buy is here. Nexus is still on a MAC-10, despite players being on double-digit money for G2. So really feeling confident and what that does do is the fact that G2 have been running so many MAC-10s is Astralis feel the necessity to buy head armor and that's what they've all done with the exception of Yugi. Uh, don't be fooled by his $400. He can't afford it. His armor isn't at 100 because he did survive last round. So we've had a PC crash on the Astralis side of things. That will be hopefully quickly solved. We even have one over here and you guys didn't realize. So, you know, you can get that done sorted nice and quick back into the gameplay. And this is it, the most crucial rifle round of the map. If G2 win this, they might just go over the line. If Astralis uh, do, then they can still fight on Dust2. Well, Amanek fast flashed out at long, and there was meant to be a bit of a response here. The counter flashes are in. Magisk is going to try and get across into the pit, but he doesn't survive the crossing. Nice. There's the follow-up nade from Zipex, and that's going to keep things even. Now, the rest of G2, they're looking to hit B. They're looking to go in, and Yugi has to make a stand. He's doubled up, and that's enough for G2 to reconsider. They leave the tunnels. They slow it down. Now they're no longer looking to commit. Dupree continuing to spam them down. I think maybe we stop standing on the other side of the smoke, G2. He's uh, not the two players you want to try and trifle with. And Dupree, he's lost him for blood. He's going to tuck himself in and play this crossfire with old mate Yugi at the B site. G2 with a minute left on the clock. Time is really their only ally at this point in time. Kenny going to start to creep on forward. Yugi looking to be this first point of contact. Dupree yet to get a kill in this round is a bit of an unknown entity being in this corner. Yugi swinging out, does best Kenny, and nice. able to assist with the follow-up onto Nexa. So it's a nice clean round for Astralis. They lose Magisk early on, but they are quick and hefty with the response. Yeah, worth noting that Magisk is uh, in-game leading inside of the current Astralis roster. Uh, at least that's what Yugi claims in recent interviews. So I think that's interesting. I'm sure Zonic is having more, you know, uh, save than ever inside of this team, considering he can comm uh, while the round's live. And obviously the fact that the regular in-game leader is not here. So just taking a bit of a hit in his performance in this game, but it's early days in the series. Zip is close on long. This is a dangerous position, but he's going to move away before the smoke fades, so it shouldn't be a problem. And plenty of utility to stall a long play as well. G2 grouped in B with the bomber top mid. They want to take full mid control, make sure this orb isn't looking down. 
It would be correct in that assumption. There are two though for Astralis. That's something that hasn't been in this game, or hasn't been, hasn't appeared in this game yet for Astralis at least. So Yugi and Device, one on B, that's Yugi. Device is on long. He's gonna have to deal with his cat take as G2 set up the utility. Yeah, device is going to be a lot more free to a help here over at short side, thanks to Zipnix having this very, very close angle. And Ooh. actually, it's not a cat play from G2. Yeah. It's an El Clasico CT drop. They do this a lot. And this time, Dupree is not able to get ahead of it. Yugi now, first time we've seen him with this secondary orb, but he's going to come to life with the first. Zipnix deals with Kenny down in mid, and they're already in the sight. Yugi caught trying to snipe players at the crossing in middle but well, they've already gotten in through the window and so this b site has fallen it's just going to be the save here for astralis holding on to the double orbs g2 taking a 13th round this cat split that they love to do when they go for these b plays once again it yeah. yields some big results for the squad that was the pistol round for g2 if you remember right they they did the exact same thing they dropped jackson to ct spawn on, on what looks like a cat take and then they fall out in mid and go for a mid to b dupree 4k that round worth noting so this time, it's a very different case. Well, and also, critically, right, about that, when when they tried it in the pistol, yeah. there was also a player in CT, which was helpful for Dupree because it kind of, you know, divided the attention of the guys in mid. Sure. But in that round there, because he's holding it down alone, the moment they get CT controlled and they're not getting shot at, everyone that goes out into middle is looking at Dupree. And that's one of the benefits of having Jax go for that CT drop, right? It's like, if he gets the information, it's clear, you're not even looking right anymore. You know, you're only worried about the peaks from the B site and close left in mid. Well, another point as well is I, I'm, I'm glad that Astralis aren't like sacrificing their, their players in, in, in positions for Yugi, right? Like they, they put Yugi in this team, they fit him in around them and that's good, right? We're seeing, when we see this double orb, we still always see Device in his default positions or at least in the good positions that you want your main orb to be in, right? He's orping, you know, long on Dust2. He's, he's watching Cat from car. He's making Yugi play B and that's good, right? You definitely don't want, you know, a, 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 like you definitely don't want Astralis to have to change what's working just to incorporate this player. So the fact that Yugi's filling in the pieces, filling in the gaps is certainly positive for Astralis. But what's not positive for Astralis is the scoreline. 13-10, G2 in the lead by two. Astralis back in with a bye and back in with that double orb. Oh, and it's a fast B play, a real change of pace from G2. Perfect time to spring something like this onto Astralis. And with both players falling immediately, it's already a save. There's, there's already not a chance in hell that you win this round. With Amanek even lurking up through Catwalk, he could cut down one of these orbs. Sorry, wow. Yugi, that's unfortunate. But that's just how it goes sometimes. Amanek dropping in behind enemy lines. And a 14th now appearing where the number 13 is. That's how this works. Crazy. It's pretty cool how they coded that in. <laughs> the save is successful, Harry, but uh, I mean, so is G2. This is a great Dust 2 game for them right now, right? Considering new Convertigo are coming up, uh, a map pool that certainly favors Astralis, like most map pools do. G2 definitely needed Dust 2 in this series if they wanted to make it competitive. And boy, this is more than competitive. Full save, five alive for G2. And only two rounds to push them over the edge to let them take their map pick in this series. Only one orb this time. The money is finally run dry, right? Yugi losing that in CT to the cat drop. So Astralis only get away with one. Uh, that really has to be put to good use right now. Device is spotting middle, trying to stop one of these faster plays from G2. Kenny posted on long, pushed back by the flash. Zip takes control. So Astralis, they have B smoked. They've got long smoked. Catwalk's being watched by Device's AWP. And double mid setup as well, or by Magis rather, double mid setup. So everything is covered here for Astralis. to keep letting them get away with it, at least for now. Not really pressuring too much. It's a flash in mid for some information. Hunter goes for it, but Molly does land. 
G2 looking like another A take again with the setup, right? You can always fall back into not only mid to Bs, but if needed, throw Jax into CT spawn again. Try that same setup. We'll see if G2 just commit to the five man cat play, though. Everyone's here right now. Magisk is looking to push it, and he's ahead of the flashbang as well. Good shot. Magisk gets one. That's worth it. The trade is in. Device is posted with the AWP, and Zip is on long as well. G2 already getting flanked. Last time Dupree did this, he pushed too long, and he went long. This time he needs to come in on that cat flank if he wants to win the round. Oh, and he's caught a good timing there. Dupree coming in and Device now repositioning. He's given a bit of breathing room as a result of them having to turn around and deal with his teammate on cap. And Astralis, they do get a handle back on that round. It's a team ace. Everyone pulling their weight for the Danish side. 12 now on the board. Still two behind that of the G2 squad. But a chance for Astralis to recover within regulation. As we approach round 27, the money for either side is okay, but it's definitely Astralis bearing the brunt of the risk right now. And for them being the team on the back foot, that is not where they want to find themselves. This next round, this one right here is imperative if they want to keep this comeback rolling. That's a good time nade from Device, but actually Jax sneaks back and won't receive too much of a beating. G2 are heavy in middle right now. Three players setting up with the Molotov in the middle. That's not going to do anything. I don't know if that was meant to be a molly or it was simply just a fake uh, to distract them. Either way, G2 are moving fast off the back of it. And uh, Astralis have no idea how close they are. Dupree needs to be careful. Jackson shot. Dupree knows he turns, but he's too late. His smoke in his hand and a bullet in his face. It's a double entry into B. That's the round done. Astralis won't even consider it. They won't even think about it. It's already moved past it as the save is happening. G2 with a bomb plant off the back of two kills. The fast mid to B. We saw Device go middle uh, last round with the AWP to deny exactly that. And G2 do it one round later. No one watching, no one waiting, no one ready. And it's not every day that you can catch Astralis with their pants down. So G2 will take that 15 rounds. Looking to push us over the line. Yeah, G2 are even hunting, and I absolutely love this decision to hunt. If they even take one weapon away, that is huge. And if Device falls with the orb, that would be even bigger, but they're not moving, they're not budging. Device, Magisk, and Zipex able to stay alive. That is going to be worth its weight in gold here, up against map point for G2. Thankfully, with saving these three rifles, the buy is in for Astralis, and it looks great. It's everything they could possibly need. So a very essential save coming through there for the three players to stay alive. But is it going to be enough or is it all in vain? G2 uh -oh. Uh -oh. to the B site. El Clasico here. They've had so much success at this side of the map and they throw a lot of attention here Ooh. early on and now they duck away. They're trying to force a heavy rotation into B from Astralis. And now they slow it right down. They send players back into the lower tunnels. I'm curious if we, because you can see Zipnix on the minimap is getting like a little bit curious about long. And in response to seeing so many players at B, I wonder if we see Astralis get curious at other avenues on the map. Well, that's why Nexus is in T-Sport. He just left B to go watch this exact position to watch for that long flank. G2, they throw those nades B and they, they hope that Astralis over-rotate as well as use a lot of util. Now it's a fast cat. And Magis has stopped the first man in. Gonna re -peak for more. Catches Hunter with grenades out. Astralis, two men up in this round. G2 not giving up though. They're on the T-side. Any round is winnable, even in this position. It's not as clean cut as, as being locked out by a post plant. G2, well, they're locked out anyway. Post one or not. The kills are coming through. Next, it gets one walking through the smoke. Oh, the spray is whiffed. And yeah, he's not going to get a third chance of that one. Zip does clean it up. Astralis find 13. Still two behind Harry, but it is looking attainable. It is certainly looking doable for Astralis. G2 with their last tactical pause and Astralis trying to bring us to overtime. Yeah, just two rounds away from OT. It feels doable. Race main, by the way. Hunter with 355 utility damage, more than Jax. Wait, He's saying Jax has no util damage. Jax is zero. Yeah, that's the that's the joke. That's the joke. There. <laughs> no, I know. I yeah yeah. I can read. Second. Yeah, well you know, like reading isn't my strong suit, no. but like also I can do it if I try really hard. So there's that. Like I just look at like every other word and I try and piece it in, together. In school, did your teachers tell your parents that you had so much potential? You just need to unleash your potential, Harry. 
Is that, is that the no, they of... just said, like, he's 16, he should be able to read by now. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much how that went down. And yeah, well, here we go. G2, 15 on the board, and Astralis oh. trying to take us to overtime. Orp in the hands of Device, and he's got it over here in middle. He's looking to get stuck into this round. Device, and of all the time, he's been having a great game today. That Molly misses again. They throw it for the second time. And now they try and execute out into middle with the flashes. Device still posted up here, but Kenny will remove him from this round, from round 29. A key man taken out of it. And now Astralis three on four. Have to try and do the impossible to keep this one alive. Yeah, and it really does feel impossible with Astralis pulling away from A at the worst moment, right? The Zippy's trying to regain lost ground, but that Molly is going to signal his position, and Amanek will just rid him of the round. Smoke on the Molly. Desperate times now for Astralis. It's Majisk and Yugi in a two on four for the map. Molly's again do more and more damage. And it's not the damage that's the problem, it's the information that you two get from it. They know there's a player in CT, they know where both of these Astralis members are. Yugi, good shot, but it's quickly traded, and it might not be enough for Majisk clutch this round, he jumps, he dies.